Hey guys, welcome to Camping with Steve. I'm back in my favorite area in the world. And just checking out a few of my old boondocking spots. This, I used to drive down in my RV. And, wow, that's not happening anymore. Looks like they put these things here uh, quite some time ago. I would uh, drove down there a good 10 years ago to camp. And there seems to be a lot more gates up all over the place. So I may find myself at the campground, but that's okay. It's my favorite campground in the world. They've done a lot of logging since I was here last. Logging roads are always my source of excellent free camping with nobody around. And it uh, looks like they're really getting down to business here, so that might not work. My good spot going up that hill there has a brand new gate on it, and it's closed. It's a shame that one's closed off, but I'm going to head down to the campground and see how busy it is because I want to do some camping. But wow, you can't beat that view. Perfect. So it's not too busy, and this is my favorite campground in the world. So I'm gonna go see if my favorite spot is available here. Somebody else is setting up right over there, but they're spaced out quite nicely here. Now this is a campsite, uh, and it sure beats the bridges and stuff I camp underneath of. So I will actually set up here for the night. It's nice to have a break from uh, paddling out to tiny islands. I have water this time. I think everything's gonna be all right. Fifteen bucks a night is not too bad for having to not stress about hiding from people, so let's do this. Those relatively longer term viewers are going to remember this spot from the beach storm camping. Uh, it was about two years ago we were out here, uh, I was with beautiful wife, and we'd set up the gazebo. And it was an awful storm that night, but it was so fun. And we've always remembered this as our favorite campsite ever, so I figured it's time to revisit it two years later. I don't have such a glamorous uh, tent this time. Uh, just this little one from the last time and a perfect spot to set it up over there some of these campgrounds really like to put out these uh, smooth sand spots for setting up tents oh boy so that is going to be what happens today no sleeping on rocks for stever still wet from last time let this air out Gonna need more driftwood. I thought there'd be more driftwood out here, but that's okay. Just means more walks on the beach looking for the stuff.
Step one has been completed. So moving along to step number two. Today that's a cider. Um, I don't think I've ever cracked one for step two, but it's this Marydale thing. Um, a subscriber of some kind left a care package at a liquor store in Langford. And in the comments, they said to stop by and pick it up. And I went in, I believe the comment just had the name Derek and I replied to it and I, uh, I don't think I heard back, but thank you very much. Um, this is going to be a much needed treat from drinking a box of wine. So, let's see. Oh yeah, I can get behind this. Extra dry and bold. And I like it dry. Bull kelp. Bull kelp. This whole beach is a bunch of bull kelp. Go, oh, piece of driftwood. Ooh, piece of driftwood. Kind of anticipated I'd be up that logging road, full of all those slash piles, and that firewood wouldn't be an issue. So I'm just scavenging every little bit I can. Gonna have to walk down there. It looks like a big mother load of driftwood. Guy air out, dry out, and take a tour of the campground because uh, this is really quite a special place. Right along the beach here, used to be able to pull right up, and that's where I'd camp. There's been some erosion here, so that's not possible anymore. And uh, things have changed since I lived out here. I basically parked the RV out here for pretty much a full winter, uh, just camped right on the beach, and it was the time of my life. Big tsunami siren, so that thing will blast off when the big one comes. No shortage of fresh water. I used this last week. <laughs> the earthquake instructions. Uh, this spot gets a double whammy because there's a dam up there that'll likely burst and then that'll flood this area. Then the tsunami comes that way. So, gotta go right back up that road there as quick as you can because you got like 20 minutes before the water from the dam comes, and possibly much, much less coming out from the coast. Highly popular spot with surfers due to the surf. There's a few campsites closed off uh, since I was here because uh, this carpet burrweeds up to its old tricks again, so they're trying to clear that out of here. Oh, look at this one. The local surfing group association thing has set up a couple of these warming saunas. Uh, strictly members only type of deal, so we're not going to go check them out. But uh, it'd be just what you needed after a long day of surfing these uh, cold Pacific Northwestern seas. I know I say this all the time, but it really just doesn't get any better than this. So the washrooms here, they do have washrooms, but it's the old don't fall in type. So really, there's not a whole lot to it. Uh, just a real basic campsite. Uh, you got your spots you can park right in front of the beach. It's more for RVs. You got these little walk-in ones, like what I'm in. And there's a few other drive-in ones that are a little more private. And uh, bring your own firewood or scavenge the beach firewood, if there is any. And we're midways through that. So yeah, you don't need much more than this. Alright, now I got wood. Um, we're gonna load this in. I got one of these pull start fire things. Uh, I used it in another episode, and this thing is built for driftwood. This stuff is wet, sandy, and salty. I have wrecked a few chainsaw blades on this in the past. So, a couple of the smaller pieces in here, and uh, Let's pull start a fire. Right about time to do the pull start and boogie. 
and uh, the thing seems needlessly uh, gimmicky, really, but it works really good. So, credit where credit is due. And burns for a solid half hour. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sponsored by them, but if they're listening, it's a uh, good poster of this thing. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. I guess by the time this video airs, I'm not on the island any longer. Uh, I had to get back and deal with uh, taxes. I got stuff to sign before the deadline in a few days, and I had to do that at home. So I have a whole bunch of stuff I want to film here, and I'm going to be back sooner than later. But I've terrorized the poor citizens of Langford for long enough <laughs> over the last few weeks, and we're going to give them a break. So. When I come back, I've got a list of things to film. I've done my research. I had a great time visiting with friends and family that I haven't seen in years. And uh, this place is very near and dear to me. So, enough of that. Uh, I guess we'll start cooking something. Um, this is not the risky stealth video that some of you may have come aboard for. But I tend to run 50% stealth, 50% not stealth. All depends on what I'm up to. But uh, right now, I think showing off in a great campground and uh, having a little meal is quite a good, poignant end to this, uh, this island adventure. Alright, I'm making some uh, grilled cheese, beef dip things tonight, Swiss cheese, we got uh, au jus for the dipping, and it's a concentrated sauce. We'll get that going first. Concentrated au jus stuff, I'm going to have to put in some water, but uh, even on a home stove, it's quite tricky to... Uh, <laughs> more hoshu than I've seen in my life. Wow. Yum. Uh, look at that boiling, then we'll cook up the sandwiches. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Half gallon of hoshu. That should get us started. And, uh, <clears throat> doing an old trick here. There's mayonnaise, which can be used in place of butter or margarine. That is the secret. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, yep. Home style ropes. Uh, there's this beaver brand uh, horseradish. So we gotta put that in there. Oh, great. Well, 
Yeah, those are grilled. Yeah. Now we're talking. And uh, place these up and dig in. Because this is not a glamorous meal, of course. <laughs> As always. However, it's a beautiful way to end the trip with uh, Hmm. Where did he go? Oh. Let's see. This is possibly good. Hmm. What can be better than a grilled cheese beef dip? Um. So, of course, I'm going to thank the donation folks, and of course, um, happy birthday to anybody who's having a birthday today, and I know there's got to be a few of you out there. This is not exactly uh, the exciting video that uh, I wanted to end this trip with, but there's a place not too far from here, which has no trespassing signs all over it and it's a it's a very popular place and I thought I'd go out there for a video but my rule is I don't cross a no trespassing sign mm. oh the horseradish makes it extra good so yeah The no trespassing signs, I do not cross because that's taking this to an illegal level. Where I want to be in the minor bylaw and infraction zone. Um, that's that's my, my goal to lot zone. Well, the ocean is getting closer to the campsite and I'm pretty sure that's the tide. Uh, it would work out well because beautiful wife wants me to bring some water back from the beach and a rock. And I'm not gonna do that in the pitch black in a rising tide. So that's a morning project. I'll have to wander through some tidal pools out there, uh, explore the thing a little more uh, in depth in the daylight. But uh, yeah, I think it's probably time to pack up and get the hay. into the tent for the night and uh, just gonna take out my jacket to use for a pillow and yeah beautiful ocean sounds outside to soothe me to sleep I'll see you guys in the morning Ah, a heavenly sleep right on the beach. So much better than that uh, bird island. <laughs> mm. Well, last night I drank the rest of the au jus. I didn't even dip bread in it, just so you know. I gotta get some more bear spray. Uh, not because I've used it, but because it's expired. Um, if you're using enough bear spray, you have to regularly replace it. Get out of the woods. But uh, yeah, they last about a year or two. And this one is due to be changed. I'm really starting to like this little tent because it packs up so small. I can pretty much almost sit cross-legged in there on this end. Uh, there's room for some gear. It's wide enough in here. I put my laptop in here last night to keep it dry. And yeah, if I were stuck in a rainstorm, I could probably sit in there all day uh, without getting cabin fever too badly. But uh, my pet peeve of all tents, which is why I always bring these crazy inflatable instant uh, gazebos, is I hate setting them up and tearing them down. So um, this is a little more, there's a little more to it than just collapsing it like one of those gazebos. But I'm gonna put the timer on. 
got all the parts I need. And I'll go as quick as I can. I'll see how long it takes starting now. Okay, how did I do? It uh, went pretty quick. I don't think I got the poles in there quite right, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, that was a quick tent and uh, not something I'd take the time to do if there was a tsunami alarm going off, but uh, yeah, I think that was a success. First load to the car, then I'll go back and find beautiful wife, a nice rock from the beach. I don't know, something shaped like a heart or something, I don't know. And uh, a little bit of water from the beach as well. And that uh, should keep us satisfied until we're back next. Got the ocean water, we just need a rock. And as any kid will tell you, they all look cool when they're wet. So we gotta find one that looks cool and it's dry. Then we know we got a good rock. That guy's sparkling away even when it's dry. That is a winner. Yeah. Well, goodbye, you awesome little piece of paradise. We'll see you real soon, I hope. When I lived here on the beach, I thought I had life all figured out. I didn't, but uh, it always packs a punch coming back here. <laughs>